Welcome once again to Anesthesia Tools. In this edition, we shall start our journey around mechanical ventilation. We are also joined by Dr. Anup Kumar, critical care physician and an academic enthusiast. In this part of the journey, our agenda includes an overview into non-invasive ventilation bundle an introduction of the NIV machine, related terminology, graphics to understand the fundamentals and how to set an NIV machine. Most institutions implement NIV care bundle. It checks or validates key points. First is NIV indicated. Does the patient have an acute respiratory acidosis that is pH less than 7.35 PCO2 more than uh, 45 millimeters of mercury and whether an evidence based indication is present say COPD exacerbation neuromuscular disease obesity hyperventilation etc. Second whether treatment of underlying medical problem is instituted it may include control oxygen therapy nebulized bronchodilators, steroids, antibiotics when indicated, chest x-ray. Next question is ensure appropriate setting or designated area to initiate NIV. Proper monitoring facility and experience of the healthcare provider is to be ensured. Number four, explain the procedure to the patient. This will improve the patient comfort and compliance to NIV plan. 5. Having a plan in case of treatment failure. Treatment escalation plan and resuscitation status should be discussed and documented. So this is NIV care bundle. Once we have decided in favor of NIV, you need to know your device. It's over to Dr. Anup Kumar to introduce the NIV machine for you. Now uh, coming to the uh, ventilator per se, here you can see like we have different parts of the ventilator. First thing we have a ventilator like this, this is a BiFab uh, ventilator and this is a single limb circuit. Usually we will be having a two limb circuit, here only one limb will be there, that will be going to the patient inspiration. And the expiratory gas, the whatever the patient exhales, that will be leaking around the leak port. Okay. So, in other words, you should need a leak port in the face mask. Otherwise, there will be carbon dioxide retention and again barotrauma. So, th this can be done in different ways. Like you have two types of mask. This is called a vented mask, means you can see a hole here, or sometimes we'll be having a mask, sorry, a valve here. So whenever you keep the your uh, hand near that, you can see the significant air leak. So you should have an air leak or if it is the mask is not having an air leak there, you can connect something like a leak port here. There are two types of leak port. The same way when you are connecting the single limb non-invasive ventilator to a tracheostomy tube, there also you will have to connect to the this leak port. Okay. And here in COVID also, now what we are doing is, instead of these non-vended circuit, we vended mask, we use a mask without a, a vent or without leak. And then we put a viral filter here. Then after that, you put a leak port. So whatever gas is coming out will be, uh, first of all, filtered through the viral filter. Then only it will be exhaled out. Okay, so here it will be not vended. You put a viral filter here and the leak port this part so the this will be coming through the viral filter and going out so now you come to the uh, dual limb circuit in dual limb circuit we have a inspiratory port okay the gas goes in patient exhales and the gas goes out through the uh, expiratory limb so you have an inspiratory limb and an expiratory limb so this is basically used in a ICU ventilator, you select a non-invasive ventilator mode, then go with the dual link circuit. So here what you have to keep in mind is, the mask you are using should be non-vended. Okay, so there should not be any air leak here because there is an expiratory port. So now, 
how to uh, start a ventilator so this is a ventilator you have to uh, uh, initially you have to connect the ventilator circuit to the power plug okay so the the cable should be connected to the plug that is the first step then you should uh, if if you want you can put a filter here an hme filter or a viral filter then you connect the circuit there followed by a vented mask so this is a way you should assemble the circuit so this is the first thing you have to do okay and after connecting in the back side of the machine there will be a switch you switch on that then you will have to do the adjustment and the circuit you always use a sterile circuit there are reusable circuit but you will have to eto sterilize those circuit okay fine now we will look into the basic concepts related to niv and familiarize with some terminology this is what happens to pressure time scalar when you institute positive pressure ventilation trigger is something which initiates the breath cycle what follows is inspiration now after some time exhalation starts and change over from inspiration to exhalation is called cycling so we have introduced two terms trigger and cycle trigger the initiation of breath cycle which can be done by the patient or in some circumstances the device or ventilator triggers the breath cycling is the change over from inspiration to exhalation again either the patient or ventilator can do the job depending on the mode of ventilation what is shown here is pressure versus time scalar tracing this is how the tracing looks like the baseline is elevated because we set an expiratory positive pressure epap sometimes called peep epap keeps the upper airways tended and helps in lung recruitment and facilitates co2 removal now the machine attempts to raise the pressure to a set value called ipap or inspiratory positive airway pressure the difference between epap and ipap is the pressure support rather it determines the volume delivered once the breath is initiated or in other words triggered inspiration occurs now it cycles from inspiration to exhalation now listen carefully from time zero or trigger how much time it takes to raise the pressure to ipap level is termed rise time remember that if rise time is less the flow generated should be high to reach the ipap fast enough if the rise time is more lesser flow can slowly bring up the pressure to ipap can you notice that the time till the change over to exhalation occurs will be inspiratory time ti however the patient may be allowed to cycle over a range of time a minimum duration set will be ti minimum even if patient tries to cycle exhalation before ti minimum the machine will not allow that and on reaching ti minimum cycling occurs the maximum duration set will be ti max in other words if patient does not cycle himself to exhalation till ti max the machine will take over switching to exhalation This is particularly useful when patient is drowsy and hypoventilating. Now we know that the breath cycle consists of an inspiration phase and exhalation phase. Now we will have an overview of different modes in non-invasive ventilation. First one CPAP continuous positive airway pressure mode. here the patient is breathing spontaneously 
a constant pressure usually between 4 to 20 centimeters of water is delivered throughout the breath cycle. You may notice that all the breaths are initiated or triggered by the patient. Also all inspiratory phases are terminated by patient efforts. Thus patient's respiratory rate, flow rate and tidal volume depend on their breathing effort. The only change here is the CPAP, the positive pressure maintained throughout the breath cycle. This is what happens in spontaneous mode, S mode. Again the patient is breathing spontaneously. All the breaths are triggered by the patient. Patient can control the switch over to exhalation as we see in the first two tracings. The third breath cycle you can find that the cycling occurred at TI minimum because the patient attempted switching to exhalation earlier and the machine delayed cycling till the set value of TI minimum. We usually set a TI minimum of 150 to 200 milliseconds. If you look at the fourth breath cycle, it may be noticed that the cycling occurred at TI max. What does it mean? The patient did not try switching to exhalation and once the set time TA max was reached, the device took upper hand and cycled the breath to exhalation. Remember the patient is getting pressure support which is the difference between EPAP and IPAP for every breathing effort. What is ST mode? It is spontaneous time mode. Again patient is breathing spontaneously. The ventilator supports any breath initiated by the patient. Who triggers the breaths? Definitely patient can. However, if patient fails to keep up with the setup, set backup rate, device can initiate inspiration as we can see in the fourth breath. Again, who can cycle to exhalation? Patient can of course do it. The set TI min will come to play when the patient initiates early exhalation or when patient fails to initiate exhalation cycling occurs at TA max. You may pause the video and pick up the details from the picture and proceed once you are clear about it. This mode is PAC patient assist control mode. Again patient breathes spontaneously. Here all the breaths are either patient triggered or device triggered because of the backup rate. It's not worthy that the inspiratory time TI is preset. Cycling to expiration is not determined by the patient. So every breath cycling occurs at predetermined TI. T mode, time mode has fixed respiratory rate and fixed inspiratory time as set by the clinician. The trigger and cycle are both timed rather than patient determined. However, you may notice that in between patient can trigger and cycle additional breaths but no pressure support is offered by the machine. Now how do you set parameters in the NIV machine prior to use? Over to Dr. Anup. So now coming back to the our settings. So we have a bu one button here. Okay, This is uh, one button and this is the dialer. So usually to select anything you have to press this dialer once then you have to rotate it to this side or this side to reduce the values. This is basically looking at the settings. To do any settings you have to press that. This is the alarm incidence. So whichever the uh, time the patient had alarms everything you can look at this thing. This is looking basically looking at the monitors. Different pages of monitors are there. So how, how much ever time you press that you can see that. This is basically for posing the alarm. Okay. So this is for the posing the alarm. This is the dialer and this is the on off switch. So initially to start the uh, uh, button you can uh, switch that. 
the same way to uh, put the patient on the, the standby machine or, or standby also you can press this dialer button then you can give a confirmation okay so now moving to the uh, second one if you push the the the, the initial uh, uh, button that is the the monitoring button this is the second page here you can see the first page you have already seen okay this is the first page in first page you will be seeing only inspiration and expiration you can have a green bar here which you all might have seen the, that is the first page so here it will be the ipap and here it is the epap so it will be moving on uh, from this point to this point okay so here if you press that you can see what is the leak what is the tidal volume respiratory uh, 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 rate the ie ratio here the again ie ratio you don't have complete control but you can uh, adjust the ie ratio with the ti uh, uh, timings so what is the ie ratio and what is the ti what we have kept and what is the minute ventilation okay so this is the second basis of monitoring and in the third page you can see the pressure and flow this is something like our uh, like uh, uh, the the pv scalars like something that you can uh, see the pressure time and flow time scalars you can see depending on that you can see whether the uh, all the efforts are uh, picked up by the machine or not picked up by the machine and here in the settings again you have initially different settings are there the mode we have to set the different modes are there i have already told we have to set the ipap we have to set the epap so initially you should set a uh, mode ipap and epap and there is a pathology can be reset in some of the machines like you will be having obstructive restrictive and a normal so here if you some uh, select something like an obstructive for a copd then obviously these uh, uh, inspiratory times everything will be ti all those triggers everything will be vary okay so this is how the settings will be suppose if you press this advanced setting then it will go into the uh, like this is not the advanced settings this is another mode where you can again go into the learned circuit mode options uh, again uh, the, uh, the oxygen uh, calibration uh, uh, e start e pap maximum ramp time and ramp time here again what is the start e pap means start e pap means suppose you are setting a uh, like epap of something like 6 okay so it is it uh, just like the normal ventilator the as the patient is completely conscious it will not immediately start from the 6 so you can set up a rate from the, somewhere around 3 so initially it will start 3 then gradually it will go into 6 so how much time you need for that that also you can set that okay so that is why the patient will be more comfort initially there will be only minimal pressure then gradually will be building up so when setting the ventilator you have to always set a start epap then the target epap which we have already set same way the ramp time also you can uh, uh, set uh, accordingly okay ramp so here we come to the end of this part of the journey around with niv this is just an introduction We will be back with finer details and practical points. Goodbye for the time being. It's me Sanish along with Anoop signing off for Anesthesia Tools. Thank you.